A fintech company is saying that their AI customer service bot in just one month is doing the work of 700 people. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the big themes that people are constantly looking out for when it comes to discussions of AI is how it's going to impact jobs, or more specifically, evidence that it is impacting jobs in some specific way. Today, then, it will not be surprising that there has been a ton of buzz and conversation about fintech company Klarna discussing the results of their first month of using an AI assistant that is powered by OpenAI. The headliner stats is that in this month, the Klarna bot had 2.3 million conversations, which represented around two-thirds of Klarna's customer service chats. In terms of customer satisfaction, its score is on par with human agents. Klarna also reports that it's more accurate in its resolution, with a 25% drop in repeat inquiries. They also report that it's faster, with customers resolving their issues in less than two minutes compared to 11 minutes previously. But the big banner headline was that they said it's doing the equivalent work of 700 full-time agents. Now, Klarna got into some hot water back in 2022 when they laid off around 10% of their staff. At the time, the company cited issues like economic uncertainty, inflation, the likelihood of a recession. And obviously, since then, we've seen lots of other tech companies go through a similar process of staff reduction. Now, one of the things that some have noticed is that the number of people who were laid off back then is roughly similar to the 700 jobs figure that they now say this AI assistant is doing the work of. However, in a statement to Fast Company, they said, This is in no way connected to the workforce reductions in May 2022, and making that conclusion would be incorrect. We chose to share the figure of 700 to indicate the more long-term consequences of AI technology, where we believe it is important to be transparent in order to create an understanding in society. We think it's important to proactively address these issues and encourage a thoughtful discussion around how society can meet and navigate this transformation. There are a number of different takes on this. First of all, many are pointing out that this suggests that AI is not just some future thing, but is here now and is going to have a big impact. Gavin Baker writes, AI is going to have a massive impact on every industry. Others didn't really buy it. Market commentator Sean Tuffy shared a meme basically intimating that Klarna was making up the number when it said that it thought that the assistant bot was going to drive $40 million in additional profits. Now, it is worth noting that Klarna is on the IPO path and that could be coming soon. And so showing something which investors are going to read as capital efficiency could be part and parcel in increasing interest around that IPO. For his part, the CEO of Klarna, Sebastian Simiatkowski, repeated the message that we heard in that previous statement. He tweeted today, Continuing the discussion around AI like this is important to me. While good to acknowledge the positive benefits, it's important to bring transparency around the wider societal impact so we can navigate the transition into the era of generative AI responsibly. Now, another reaction came from markets who looked at companies that provide call center jobs with a new skeptical eye. For example, French company Teleperformance, which is a call center business, saw their shares drop as much as 29% after the Klarna announcement. A Morgan Stanley analyst wrote, The AI debate has raged on for Teleperformance in 2024. Until questions around impact of pricing deflation, automated volume, and shape of future earnings are answered, the stock performance may remain challenged. Now, Teleperformance was perhaps most impacted because it actually supplies these services to Klarna, but other publicly traded call center companies like U.S. Concentrix Corp. and Task Us Inc. also were down significantly in pre-market trading. Concentrix, for example, was down 12%. It is useful to note that there was also some skepticism of this when people actually went and tried the bot themselves. Fintech content creator Simon Taylor writes, I tried the chatbot. It's kind of shit. Did Klarna get great PR because they did a chatbot here? Gergely Oros writes, When something sounds too good to be true, maybe it is. Did Klarna really fully replace 700 customer support agents overnight? I did what few retweeting this story did. Tried Klarna's AI assistant. It's underwhelming. It recites exact docs and passes me on to human support fast. I think whatever the truth is when it comes to Klarna specifically, the fact that this story has caught on like wildfire tells you a lot about the state of the AI discourse right now, and frankly, the state of AI fears. Now, continuing to follow up on a couple stories from earlier this week, the pressure on Google around the Gemini controversy seems to be continuing to mount, and we've finally gotten some statements from Google CEO Sundar Pichai in the form of an internal company memo. Pirate Wires published the entire piece, and it reads, Hi everyone, I want to address the recent issues with problematic text and image responses in the Gemini app formerly barred. I know that some of its responses have offended our users and shown bias. To be clear, that's completely unacceptable and we got it wrong. Our teams have been working around the clock to address these issues. We're already seeing a substantial improvement on a wide range of prompts. No AI is perfect, especially at this emerging stage of the industry's development, but we know the bar is high for us and we will keep at it for however long it takes. And we'll review what happened and make sure we fix it at scale. Our mission to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful is sacrosanct. We've always sought to give users helpful, accurate, and unbiased information in our products. That's why people trust them. 
This has to be our approach for all our products, including our emerging AI products. We'll be driving a clear set of actions, including structural changes, updated product guidelines, improved launch processes, robust evals and red teaming, and technical recommendations. We are looking across all of this, and we will make the necessary changes. Even as we learn from what went wrong here, we should also build on the product and technical announcements we've made in AI over the last several weeks. That includes some foundational advances in our underlying model, e.g. our 1 million long context window breakthrough and our open models, both of which have been well-received. We know what it takes to create great products that are used and beloved by millions of people and businesses, and with our infrastructure and research expertise, we have an incredible springboard for the AI wave. Let's focus on what matters most, building helpful products that are deserving of our users' trust. As some have noted, what was not included there was any sort of timeline for getting Google human image generation back online. Another reported story from Google is that according to Adweek, the company has been quietly striking deals with some publishers to use their new generative AI tools to actually write and publish stories. Writes Engadget, the deals, reportedly worth tens of thousands of dollars a year, are apparently part of the Google News Initiative, a six-year-old program that funds media literacy projects, fact-checking tools, and other resources for newsrooms. Adweek writes, The beta tools let under-resourced publishers create aggregated content more efficiently by indexing recently published reports generated by other organizations, like government agencies and neighboring news outlets, and then summarizing them and publishing them as a new article. Now, while right now everyone is very hopped up to jump down Google's throat on anything, the idea that AI could be used particularly to support smaller or more local news organizations is something that a lot of people are positively enthusiastic about. However, given that these are just reports and that we don't really know what's going on, people are tending to focus in on some of the bad things. For example, Engadget writes, Of note, publishers in the program are apparently not required to disclose their use of AI, nor are the aggregated websites informed that their content is being used to create AI-written stories on other sites. Lastly today, one more update on the Mistral Microsoft story. It was a smaller part of the announcement, but people were wondering how much Microsoft had actually invested in Mistral as part of this new partnership, and it turns out it's a very small amount, around $16 million. Mistral said that this is an extension of the Series A and doesn't change the valuation of the company. Basically, this leaves Microsoft owning less than 1% of the company. Now, of course, the bigger questions around the Mistral-Microsoft deal tend to be larger implications for the relationships of big tech to startups, what it means for open source now that Mistral Large is available proprietary only through Azure, and there are also questions around EU AI Act lobbying, but that will be the subject for another show. For now, that's going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.